A map of the world that does not include utopia is not worth even glancing at, for it leaves out the one country at which humanity is always landing. And when humanity lands there, it looks out and, seeing a better country, sets sail. Progress is the realization of utopias. Oscar Wilde. Hello, literary activists. We must imagine a better world in order to build a better world. We must take that vision apart and sort through everything that needs to be done to achieve its formation. Then we need to consider what is necessary to maintain it. Just remember that imagination is the tool that not only inspires us, but constructs our desired outcomes. So let's start to understand how to create utopian stories. History of Utopia Utopian stories have been around a long time. One of the earliest and most prominent utopias is found in The Republic by Plato, authored around 375 BCE. However, it is Renaissance humanist Thomas More who coined the term utopia in 1516 for the title of his book about an ideal pastoral society. He chose it as a pun. Utopia means no place in Latin, but it also sounds like utopia, which means good place. Utopias and their counterpart dystopias are thought experiments. With dystopias, some aspect of current culture is inflated, such that its potentially negative effects become obvious. What happens in a country where people are fed nothing but propaganda and are subject to government-managed conformity, as in George Orwell's 1984? What happens when our country is taken over by misogynistic authoritarians, as in Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale? Utopias engage with positive breakthroughs happening today. They also have a large scope for speculating on what might contribute to improved conditions through environmental engagement, cultural development, political systems, economic systems, new technology, and more. As an example, one modern branch of utopianism is solarpunk. Jay Springett, longtime editor of solarpunks.net, defines it as a movement in speculative fiction that seeks to answer and embody the question, what does a sustainable civilization look like and how can we get there? As our world roils with calamity, we need solutions, not warnings. Solutions to live comfortably without fossil fuels, to equitably manage scarcity and share abundance, to be kinder to each other and to the planet we share. The Problem with Utopia The concept of utopia is often approached with skepticism, if not outright cynicism. In many modern stories, if some place describes itself as utopian, you can almost bet that it will in fact be dystopian. The question to be asked when engaging with the utopian story is, whose utopia is this? Who thinks this would be the best of all worlds and why? Traditionally, only European men of means could afford to publish their visions of the future. Sometimes those futures attempt to extend equality to other members of humanity, but often they don't, some even retaining the practice of slavery. This imbalance is corrected by supporting the dissemination of many utopias from many viewpoints. Sadly, people find it easier to recognize what they don't want, rather than opening to consider what might work. People are often fearful that what you are offering them is just another way in which their lives will be made worse. The early years of the internet were much like this. We also run up against people who are fearful of the suffering and loss they may face in attempting to create change. Their outlook is, best give up now, rather than no failure later. Every advance we have ever made has come from people who held to a vision larger than themselves. These people were willing to face personal loss, 
for the betterment of their children, their people, and the well-being of their planet. Finally, the news likes reporting on real-world attempts at utopian societies that went horribly wrong. These groups often indulge in either separatist utopianism, authoritarian utopianism, or both. Separatists believe they are a special group of people who alone have access to the best way to live and wish to remove themselves from outside influences that may taint their way of life. Authoritarian utopianism believes that people are no darn good and power should be given to a special class. Plato's Republic is an authoritarian utopia. Utopia, in order to fulfill its promise of a better world, must belong to all of us. How can you tell a story in a perfect world? The problem with utopia in the minds of many storytellers is, how can you tell a story in a perfect world? What could possibly happen to engage your audience? This comes from thinking of utopia as a place of static faultlessness. It's a sort of paradise where all of life is carefully accounted for and managed. I'm sure we can easily see how this might be more of a hell. We need to think of utopia as a place with a functional society. People are brought up in supportive schools, communities, and states. Everyone's needs are met. Everyone is treated with equal dignity, and humanity lives in balance with nature. People are still not perfect. Circumstances will arise that aren't perfect. But because the society is functional, we have the means by which to right the situation. Much of the Star Trek franchise is based on this concept. The Federation of Planets is basically benevolent. Everyone's needs are met without the intermediary of money. People, including alien people, cherish certain life-affirming values and abide by codes of conduct meant to be respectful of other life forms. The stories happen when these values and codes are challenged, and our characters must prove their worth with the help of a social system prepared to set things right. Without recourse to science fiction, we already have a vast array of these sorts of narratives. They can be found in tales of redemption, Bildungsroman, slice of life stories, and cozy mysteries. In an Agatha Christie novel, Hercule Poirot or Miss Marple almost always set the world right by the end of the book through intellect, insight, and friendship. How you build utopia. In future episodes of Stories Make the Future, I will go into even more depth about how to build a utopian world. However, I would like to start by saying we have workable ideas here and now. I can highly recommend the movie 2040 as a place to find many examples. We do not have to start from scratch, and often we can make a more compelling case for change by pointing to existing documents that are deservedly well respected, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the World Charter for Nature. Dr. Keith David Wattenpah, professor and director of human rights studies at the University of California, Davis, says in his upcoming book, Most Human, Human Rights, Storytelling, and Star Trek, the human rights idea is, in the end, about the right to be fully human. It is about the responsibility to recognize and support the humanity of others in an age of vast inhumanity and in the shadow of the human capacity for self-annihilation. In the same way, the study and promotion of human rights, even as those stories find expression in popular culture, can help us to understand the human rights struggle as experienced by real people, by human beings, that form the basis for human rights action. What we are aiming for here is to help people to be immigrants into the future rather than refugees. 
instead of having to pick up and run due to global catastrophe without knowing if we will find a safe landing, we want a chance to carefully consider what we bring with us and feel secure that our destiny will take us to a new and beneficent place. We can help do this by creating a great diversity of good ideas represented in rollicking good stories.